In this video, I'm going to go over the difference between a chemical change and a physical change. So let's start with the definition of a chemical change, which is that you're going to have different molecules at the beginning and the end of the change. So let's just start off with an example. So let's pick iron rusting. So at the beginning, before you have any change, you just have your iron let's picture a nail. And so now we know what our change is, it's this iron is going to rust. So after the change, we have the iron left over from our nail, it didn't all turn into rust, but we also have this new molecule. We have a rust molecule. And so that's the definition of a chemical change. We have different molecules at the beginning and the end. If you add or delete any molecules, that means that you've had a chemical change. So we can also, from this, draw this chemical equation. We can write this out. This is a lot of chemistry, right? So we see here that we needed iron, that's our nail. We needed O2, so that's just oxygen that was in the environment naturally in the atmosphere. And then it created rust, which has the formula Fe2O3. So chemical changes will have these chemical equations like this, which are able to show us our reactants and our products. And so just one more thing that will kind of help you uh, tell the difference, and this isn't a hundred percent, but a lot of the time a chemical change will have a color change and or a smell, and there's usually no way to get back to the original substance. So in this example, we do have a color change, right? Rust has that orangey color um, that's different from iron, and there's a slight smell, not a huge one, right? And then also this other thing, which I think when you're doing problems that are just asking you to tell the difference between chemical and, and physical, this is the easiest one, is think to yourself, can I go backwards? Can I have a rusty nail and go back to having just a clean nail? And the answer is no, right? Even if you clean off that nail and it looks kind of shiny again, you're still going to look at your rag or your you know, paper towel and you're going to see all that rust that you have. And you aren't able to actually turn that rust back into iron. So there's really no way to go back. All right, so that's chemical changes. And now let's look at physical changes. So the definition for that is that there's a change, right? It's still a physical change. It's not just nothing, but it's not chemical. And so a lot of the definition of physical is just whatever it was for chemical. Now it's not true. It's the opposite for physical. So in this case, we have the exact same molecules at the beginning and the end of the change. We have not added or gotten rid of any molecules. So for this example, let's think of just cutting a nail in half. So again, in our beginning, we're going to have just our nail made of iron. And then at the end, we're just going to have our nail cut in half, which is still just iron. We didn't add any molecules or remove any, but there's still a change, right? You wouldn't say that a nail is the exact same thing as a nail has been cut in half. It's a difference. You've done a change. And so for this, we could write a chemical equation, but it would just look like this, right? So there's no real purpose to. So you're going to see that we don't really write physical changes like this because it's like, well, we still have the same thing. And then also just as an FYI, when you're taking chemistry, most of the problems you're going to do, probably about 90% of the things you talk about are going to be chemical changes. We're really focused on how do we make and break molecules and bonds. And so physical changes will be things that you will touch on, but most of chemistry is spent on chemical changes. And so just uh, the little signifiers, again, this isn't 100%, but it's kind of a good guideline. A lot of the time, a chemical change will not have a color change and or a smell, and you can get back to the original substance. So in this, we see that there's no color change, there's no smell with just cutting a nail in half. And uh, can we get back to the original substance? Well, it'd certainly be easier. We could weld it back and it would kind of look the same. It's certainly easier to get back to a nail that's just... Uh, being glued back together than it is to turn rust back into iron. That's really hard. All right, so now I'm going to do a bunch of practice problems that you'll probably do in your class. So let's go over these six different typical examples and kind of answer, are they going to be chemical or are they going to be physical? All right, so starting on the left, we have burning paper. And so any type of burning, that's going to be chemical, right? And you can just kind of think about it. Well, there is like this big color change, right? We have whatever we have, and it turned then into ash or dust. Um, and there's really no way once you just have that ash or dust to turn it back into paper, you're stuck. So burning paper, any type of burning, that's going to be a chemical change. All right, next, boiling water. So this 
is going to be a physical change. And in fact, any type of phase change is going to be just a physical change. So if you are, if you're freezing, if you're melting, boiling, etc., that's all physical. If we think about it, it really just has that definition. It's the same molecule at the beginning and the end. If, for instance, in boiling water, you have liquid water, it's just H2O, and at the end, if you boil it all off, you'll have steam, which is, again, just water in its gas form, H2O. So you didn't break any of the bonds in between oxygen and hydrogen, and you didn't create any molecules or destroy any molecules. You just had water before and after. That's why boiling water or any phase change like melting, etc., is all going to be physical. All right, next, milk souring. So this is, again, definitely has a smell, right? This is definitely going to be a chemical change. There's no way to get back to the original substance. It has a color change and a smell. Once you've made sour milk, you're actually having a chemical reaction within the milk. It's making something that is now not milk that you had before. Definitely a chemical change. All right, so fourth, dissolving sugar. And I think this is the one that students have the most trouble with. And so let's kind of think about what's happening here when we dissolve sugar. So do we have a color change? Mm, kind of, right? Sugar is white, water is clear. If you dissolve it, it's clear, but it's not like a huge color change. Is there a smell? Not really, um, right? It kind of smells sweet, it's just like sugar. It's not the smell of a change. And so we have to really rely on this third one. Is there a way to get back to the original substance? So let's imagine we dissolve the sugar. We just have clear water, but we know it's sugar water. Can And someone said, I'll give you a million dollars if you can turn this back into sugar and water. Well, you'd probably try, right? And what you could do is you could just leave your cup of dissolved sugar water out. And after time, the water would evaporate and go into the atmosphere. It would just separate itself into H2O. And then at the bottom of the cup, eventually you'd have your dried out sugar. And so this is actually a physical change. So any sort of dissolving is always going to be a physical change. And so people get confused, I think, because it's like, oh, well, it really seems pretty different, right? It seems like sugar water is different than just two different things. But what we're actually doing when we dissolve is we're not doing a chemical change. We're not taking sugar and water and turning it into a third molecule. What we're doing is we're just separating out the molecules. So dissolving works because each sugar molecule, at first it's just bonded and it's just next to its other sugar molecules. But once it's dissolved all the water molecules surround it and then you know we can't see individual molecules so once all the sugar is broken up and is separated by water it seems invisible to us even though it's still there and it's the same molecule that it used to be so any type of dissolving always a physical change all right two more examples real quick we have baking bread that has all of our signifiers of a chemical change right it has a color change has a smell you can't go from bread back to dough this is a chemical change and then last we have burning gasoline that's definitely going to be a chemical change too right so this is how our cars work a bunch of a bunch of different transportation that we have all works like this um, if you're burning anything you're taking all of the energy that's stored in those carbon hydrogen bonds you're breaking them you're getting the energy in them and you're using it to move your vehicle so any type of burning definitely going to be chemical all right, so I hope that you enjoyed this little breakdown of chemical and physical changes, that it was helpful for you, and happy studying. Hey, I hope you liked that video. Please feel free to subscribe, click around and watch my other tutorials, and as always, happy studying.